Well, everybody, thanks for tuning in to my Saturday video. As you can see, I'm in the concrete jungle of the city, but that doesn't mean we're not going to have a great show. I'm going to bare my soul, dig deep, and talk about some really important issues that pertain to life and the discovery of Sasquatch in this research. We're also going to talk about one of my heroes, one of my greatest mentors, Survivor Man, and some amazing stuff that he did and why he had so much success because he's such a, a brilliant and amazing man and we can learn so much from what he's done. So stay tuned. Let's get into this episode right now. I've taken out dozens of wildlife officers, PhDs, and had them live interact with Sasquatch on multiple occasions. Trained in the art of tracking by a Cree Nation's elder and a military sniper, my skill sets include camouflage techniques using the terrain and its features to mask ground movement, counter surveillance, survival, evasion, and escape techniques. So thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Uh, I'm in the city because I have some major personal issues to take care of, and it's not really much of a secret right now, but. Uh, we all go through horrible, desperate, terrible times, no matter how hard we try to avoid them. And what I've really taken away from this one, which has literally been the worst experience of my life to date, is you find that you have, everybody has, you know, friends and friends talk and everybody talks, everybody has blah, 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 they say they do things. But I'll tell you, when it comes time to stand up and, and fight for your friends and, uh, you know, st stand, stand with them and fight with them, there's a big difference between people who do that and people who stand off to the side and go, hey, I'm your friend, but I'm just gonna stand back and hope it works out for the best. Do you know that's how Nazi Germany triumphed, almost? Because as Einstein said, all that's necessary for evil to conquer is for, great, is for good people to stand around and do nothing. Don't stand around and do nothing. Fight for what's right, do the right thing. Uh, my goodness, it's so important that people do that. And obviously you're thinking, well, what does this have to do with Sasquatch research? Well, you know, when Sasquatch, when you're out there doing research, and it's not just Sasquatch, it's any kind of animal or primate research that you're going to do, you're going to find that, that these, these beings that we refer to as animals, and Sasquatch are, are, are higher primates, most assuredly, uh, even, even most likely a people, but when they test your metal and you fail, when you're not living by the old night code of you know, do what's right no matter what it takes, even if it leads to your death. Say the truth no matter what, even if it leads to your death. If you don't have that kind of integrity, if you're not willing to die for the truth, if you're not willing to risk your life for the discovery, don't do it. Leave it to somebody else. These things, these discoveries are like the discovery of Sasquatch, like the discovery of gorillas and chimpanzees. Jane Goodall risked her life. She, when you're out there doing things with chimpanzees and they'll rip you limb from limb, even to this day, Ian Redman, who's doing gorilla research, I mean, he's been bitten by gorillas, thumped by gorillas. He loves elephant, does elephant research, and he was just about killed by an elephant that charged at him because he made a new discovery that he can't do a certain thing, or if you do act in a certain way around elephants, new behaviors pop up and he was nearly killed, trampled by an elephant. So integrity in any discovery process, in anything that is enormous and important it's the essential component. If you don't have it, don't do it. This is such a big deal. If there are man-like primates running around in the, in the wilderness of, of the Pacific Northwest, this is very important. Todd Standing has dedicated most of his life to proving that Bigfoot is real. And now he says he has evidence and wants to go to court to present it. I'm going to go to court to prove two things with PhDs, police officers, finger and pr fingerprint experts, forensic experts immense amounts of profound information all these professional experts are going to testify sasquatch is real this is harrison hot springs the heart of bigfoot country and for many here is nothing more than just a tourist attraction but todd thinks otherwise and now he's gone to the bc ministry of wildlife and fisheries to petition them to recognize the sasquatch as a legitimate species i want the law courts to force uh, the BC Fish and Wildlife to take responsibility for the species and insist they go on a three-month ecological expedition with me, at which time I will take them out and show them a Sasquatch as I've done before, as I will have proven in court. Good day, my name is Todd Standing. I am the man who takes people out into the field. And has them... His court appeal also coincides with the release of a new Netflix documentary he's made, which he says provides irrefutable evidence 
of Sasquatch sightings. I'm saying it's all real. Like a dozen other people say it's all real. Like thousands of eyewitnesses say it's all real. Chances of this even making call are unlikely. But here in Harrison Hot Springs, they're convinced he's real. I believe in Bigfoot, yes, uh, why not? Um, there's a lot of superstitions and uh, stories. Uh, there's too many of them to, to not believe. There's so much evidence that uh, you can't really ignore it, right? Evidence kind of points in the right direction that there is a Bigfoot. For now, Todd is waiting to hear back from the BC Ministry of Wildlife and Fisheries. But when he does, he'll be ready. I'm going to win. There's no... I have so much evidence, I'm so confident, can't see how I could lose this case. Tom Walsh, City News, Bigfoot Country. People talk a lot about the Sasquatch community and the lack of support that it gives, but that's not what I've learned from doing this research. I've met incredible, incredible men and women like Survivor Man, PhD Jeff Meldrum, PhD Dr. John Bernanagle and, and many more. And you know, you know what I've discovered? Even, again, going through these really hard times is that uh, expeditioners and, and people that you, you would consider, or I consider, initially as fans and supporters have become friends and colleagues. They've risen up to help me and you know who you are, you people. And uh, I've, I've never in any area of my life, in all the other places I've worked in, in university and the incredible, amazing jobs I've, I've been able to have in my life, I've never seen the kind of integrity and the kind of, and met the kind of amazing people that I've met doing Sasquatch research. So I know the Sasquatch research community gets a lot of heat and they really are very competitive and very disagreeable and very argumentative. But that's not been my experience with the people that have got close to me. And I'll tell you, I have so many fans, so many, people that were fans and supporters that have become friends and colleagues that a lot of them aren't even aware of the crap that I'm going through right now because I don't have time to explain it to all of them. But I know that in a phone call, they'd be there to support me. And the people that I have talked to have been there for me and are immensely supportive and have taught me great lessons. And uh, what, what, and who would have known doing Sasquatch research would have led to, and cooperating with people, which is so important would have led to such an incredible life for me. And I feel so blessed that I've, I've been mentored and, and work with these new people that are just so amazing. And uh, thank you so much. I love you guys that are all supporting me and helping me. And you know, even the fans and supporters, thank you so much. But again, you're asking now, okay, what the hell is he talking about? What does this have to do with Sasquatch? Well, <laughs> to, to, to impress the Sasquatch, they'll test your metal, they'll push you. They don't like twitchy people. And you know what? When you really test the metal of any being, you're gonna find out what it's really made of. Uh, throwing rocks at you, charging at you, uh, doing things that scare you. This, this does not represent negative behavior. It, it represents just even testing your metals. Gorillas and chimpanzees have done this with, with Jane Goodall and Diane Fossey and Eden Redman. So it's, uh, anyways, it's, it's just such an important lesson to learn. And you have to understand that with the Sasquatch, the reason integrity is so important, so important, is because the Sasquatch amongst themselves, this has become very clear to me, they don't understand deception. They don't understand deceit amongst themselves. And they fear that in us, and they evade it and avoid it in us. And if you show that, they'll have nothing to do with you. That is one of the reasons they so easily evade us, because they love their families. They're devoted to one another. Why haven't we found a body? Because when one of them dies, they do something amazing with it and, and, and have a reverence for its place and, and, and memory. I'm, I, I don't have the evidence to support this, but I feel it in my heart, which is more important. So think about that in your life. Try to, let's all of us try so hard to, to live by good honor and good integrity and, and think about you know, what it would mean if, if all of us could always tell the truth, no matter what, even if it led to your death. The world would be such an incredible place. And I think that's the place that Sasquatch live in. So let's get on to the, uh, the video this week. Speaking of integrity, speaking of honor, speaking of an amazing, amazing human being, let's talk about Survivor Man, Les Stroud. First, I'd like to explain, in case you don't know, uh, 
Les Stroud is the real deal. He's as tough as it comes. I have been nothing but immensely impressed with that man. Uh, to have, it's, it's been one of the great honors and privileges of my life to have led him out on four expeditions over multiple years into Sasquatch territory. But the question that people need to understand, or the question that people need answers is, why did he have such good success? And the answer to that is, what we've been talking about this whole video, is the man is built on integrity. The man is a titan of, of goodness and love and positivity. He is an absolute hero of mine. I can't say enough amazing, incredible things about him. He's a one-of-a-kind, brilliant, wonderful artist, and he's a shaman, in case you don't know this. The man has traveled the world uh, over and over and met some of the most incredible people, been mentored by incredible shamans, and I saw it firsthand. Survivor Man did spiritual rituals with me. He did a smoke ceremony with me that cleansed us because he's brilliant and connected and loving of the earth. Uh, the changes he fights for every day makes him such a wonderful hero in my life. And uh, that's, why, that's why the Sasquatch came around him. That's why the Sasquatch were immediately interactive with him because they could just, you'd have to be blind not to see the integrity in the man. So this week we're having a look at uh, a reworked version of what Amanda, my colleague and friend Amanda, was able to have a look at with this uh, top of the head of the Sasquatch that Survivor Man filmed. And uh, <laughs> I don't even make any bones about it. If you don't think that's the top of the head of a Sasquatch, Survivor Man is out in the godless hella middle of nowhere where, where I would never leave anybody that didn't have tremendous skills in the wilderness like Survivor Man. And he's out there and <laughs> I'm at the bottom of the mountain with his, with his film crew and uh, he's all alone and uh, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing if you, there's nothing that could have done this. This is the top of the head of a Sasquatch. It matches the shape of the Patterson female's head at the top. It matches the shape of Jake that I filmed and, and <laughs> it's, it's, it's simply a, a young male Sasquatch with a, a pointy top of his head and in the wilderness, <laughs> You know it has a point at the top of its head without ears or horns. Nothing, not in the Canadian wilderness. I've spent uh, half of my life out in the bush and that is a Sasquatch or a Sasquatch or a Sasquatch. I don't even think many beings could do what that Sasquatch does. The speed at which it takes those, uh, those gifts and the fact, even the importance of the fact that the Sasquatch trusted him enough to come by and do that. They won't do that with just anybody. They did that to an incredibly integral man who is a shaman and connected to the wilderness in brilliant, brilliant ways. And even saying all these amazing things about Survivor Man, <laughs> they would teach him. They would accept him as a student and he would learn so much from them. And that's what we're doing with my research, is we're students of these incredible beings. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for listening. And I'll say it one more time, you just saw the top of the head of a Sasquatch filmed by Survivor Man himself. There's no way that, that can be contrived. There's no way that, that could ever be faked or you just, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta be boots on the ground. If you'd seen where he was and what he went through to get there and, <laughs> and what happened that night, uh, it's a Sasquatch. Have a good day. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, come back and we'll talk some more next week. And uh, until then, you know, have a wonderful week. I'm also on Wednesday. I'll be doing my live chat. So tune in for that. Thank you very much. Y'all take care of yourself. Let's show some integrity in this world and make it a better place.